Stream Elements says, Mike Jones Draws is now live. Streaming art, weekly bringing the monsters together in a collage. What turns plain foods into fun foods? Heinz ketchup. look on the face is happy, the name on the bottle must be Heinz Ketchup, the red magic that puts more fun into everyday eating, because no other ketchup tastes like Heinz. Thicker, richer Heinz Ketchup goes further. No wonder more fun-loving young appetites go for Heinz Ketchup than any other kind. Hello, everybody. Check out this great commercial from the past. Heinz. I don't know about you, but I like Heinz ketchup, and I still use it. But uh, anyway, we, we love to show these old vintage commercials we've got because they're kind of a blast from the past. And uh, it's funny, uh, a lot of the products that are on these commercials are still being sold. Hello, welcome back to Mike Jones Draws, guys. I'm Mike Jones, of course. And of course, in the background, the mastermind behind the crime, Jacob Boone is, is here with me. Hello, Hello, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. And uh, he's here to see that the, the, the camera keeps a close eye on me. We've got a dark studio today, so yeah. the green screen's not perfect. I'm trying to deal with it. Uh, the lighting is always a problem. Uh, my uh, uh, Jake is um, usually uh, very concerned with the production values here on the show, and uh, the lighting is uh, it's problematic today because... I have to use my light table light, and I need minimal light in order to do what I have to do today. And that always brings a problem. We can't use all of our lights, and, and it just makes uh, Jake uh, makes me sad. Makes him sad because I can't get sad. a good picture. Not as resolute, I guess. But uh, anyway, welcome back to Mike Jones Draws. I love all of you. Uh, thank you for coming. If you're here. Today we're going to uh, start finalizing a drawing I've been working on for weeks. Uh, that's the monster drawing, the monster collage, the universal monsters, monsters of the 30s, cinematic monsters, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I wanted to start off by showing you all the drawings we did individually to, to uh, refresh you. Uh, this was a drawing we did of... Uh, King Kong Fay Ray actually in King Kong's hand and we ended, ended up not using it for the collage although I really like this I'd like to do another drawing with King Kong holding Fay Ray and here's King Kong and he will be in the drawing and that was the original sketch we did of him and then we uh, that was one of the later ones actually we started with with the Bela Lugosi as Dracula and we included, uh, did a Frederick March, Mr. Hyde, a Boris Karloff, Frankenstein, which, by the way, we ended up not using this particular one. I used one that I did a while before that, uh, like better to use for this particular piece, although this could be used again in something else. And then uh, I did a, uh, a Lon Chaney Sr. as the, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and another Karloff as the Mummy. Elsa Lanchester as the Bride of Frankenstein, done in brilliant blue. 
and Claude Rains as the Invisible Man. You can't see him, but he's there. Uh, we also used another drawing that I did years ago that I just was so madly in love with, I wanted to try to replicate it again. And that is this drawing of Lon Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman. And good afternoon to you, Mr. Paul Maitland. Good afternoon to Paul Maitland. I can always count on you, Paul. How you doing, man? We're just uh, I'm preparing people for what I'm going to do today. Showing them some of the old stuff I did. Uh, this is a drawing of Bela Lugosi that I did for a t-shirt that I ended up on a t-shirt. But it uh, rejected for this particular drawing. Uh, although I do like that shot of Lugosi. I'd like to do that again. Uh, this is a shot of the, an old thing I did of uh, Lon Chaney Sr. as the Phantom of the Opera. And I want to use that one because that one is perfect. It works for the, for the piece. And so does this piece, this picture of uh, Boris Karloff as the Frankenstein monster. I like that one better for this piece than I did the other. So what I did was I took these drawings that I did and then I went down and made some copies of them. And I shrunk them down a little bit here and there so that I could make a collage to fit on a 18 by 24 piece. And this is the collage I come up with and I taped all the pieces together. And this is what our, our, our drawing is going to look like. It's going to have all of them See, there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of them on one piece. Yes, thank you, thank you. This is just a, this is the layout. This is the layout, Paul. But thank you, yes, I like these, these pencil drawings came out good. And I think they'll work for the piece. You know, throw some, you know, some blacks and some grays in the background to kind of meld it. Maybe I throw a moon up here somewhere or something. It just kind of, it's kind of, I'll be dark. Darker than it looks here. Okay, so what I'm doing is um, it's 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 definitely fun, man. I, I tell you what, I loved your piece. You had five of them on yours, and and I just loved the way you did that. That was very atmospheric. It almost looked photographic. Yeah, it looked like they're standing together. You know, they're all kind of standing together. Yeah, like hanging out for a photograph. Right. This is more just like a abstract kind of a collage with a, you know, kind of like posing for the class picture, I guess. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, the only one who doesn't really fit in being not, not a 19, uh, not a, well, all of them are universal monsters. The, this is the, the creature is the only one from the 1950s. Uh, all the, uh, uh, Frederick March, Dr. Jekyll is a Paramount film. And King Kong was an RKO film, so they're not universal. Everything else is here is universal films. Universal was the king of monster movies back in the 30s. They actually ushered in the genre. So what we're going to do, and then, of course, these two here, these are, long, these are from the 20s. Uh, the Phantom of the Opera and The Hunchback of Notre Dame are both Lon, Lon Chaney Sr., who would have been Dracula had he not died. <laughs> he, he died. They wanted Lon Chaney to play Dracula in the first sound version of the film. But they ended up with Bela Lugosi, thank God, because that is, that is his role. He is Dracula. Anyway, so we take this, and we're going to use our light table today. Oh man, absolutely. The Thing for Another World is an absolute hoot. I love it. I have that movie. I watched it a couple weeks ago, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm really dig the 50s sci-fi flicks, man. They're just, they're just crazy. They're just fun. Uh, I was thinking about doing some 50s uh, stuff uh, as well. Um, you know, maybe an ode to the Hammer Horror films. 
the color, the first uh, color remakes of these classic films that I'm drawing here. Uh, that happened in the 50s. Uh, you know, the great films like This Island Earth and uh, War of the Worlds. Uh, I mean, The Time Machine came at the end of the decade. Uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth. There's been so many great films. Uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Disney in the 50s. That was an amazing adventure film and probably the best version of that story that I think they'll ever be able to film. Uh, but anyway, 50s had a lot to offer us in terms of monsters, aliens from outer space. It came from outer space. The day the Earth stood still. Uh, you know, 20 million miles to Earth, all the Harryhausen films, you know, Earth versus the Flying Saucers, uh, The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. So many great films came out of the 1950s. But today I'm doing the 1930s for the most part. 20s and 30s and 40s. I'm going to do one head at a time because I don't think I've got them all synced exactly right. Uh, I made all these drawings so even though it appears that I'm tracing my own work and I am, I'm just recreating it again. And I'm going to be taking these pencil drawings that I make here and adding to them with ink and probably a gray wash to put shadows in. So uh, Paul Mayo says this island earth is one of his favorites and the Metaluna mutant. Oh yes, the Metalunian mutant who menaces Faith Domerg who was the actress in that film. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that was cool. That was a really cool movie. Um, the best parts were at the end, though, you know, really kind of when they got out to that war, that battle of the planet thing that they were doing. That was awesome. It was a great movie. It was definitely uh, outside the box for its time. And I always liked the stars. I liked uh, Rex Reason and uh, Jeff, uh, I don't know, what was his name? I can't think of his name right now. Oh, Jeff Morrow. Jeff Morrow. I think my favorite actors that appeared in like the B sci fi flicks that were really popular then it had to be John Agar and uh, Richard Carlson. Those two guys were in a couple of the greatest of all of them, and they were memorable actors, good actors. What kind of music we got today, my man? We got some new synthwave beats coming at you hot from the underground. <laughs> hot from the underground, huh? Okay.
ever see Explorers with acting Ethan Hawke and Little Phoenix that was an homage to the old sci-fi B movies? No. Uh, what year was that made? Uh, and uh, I've never heard of that. And why is. isn't our chat talking to us? Well, it's because it's from Facebook. It only uh, works off of Twitch at the moment. I see. I see. That's me being lazy. <clears throat> Well, I know I never saw it. Is it a good movie? Sounds like it. I've never even heard of it. Me neither. Like Netflix only? This must be kind of modern. Well, River Phoenix. He's oh, River Phoenix. That's right. River Phoenix died a long time ago. Yeah, didn't he? yeah. Sorry about that. I forgot about that. You know, in this day and age, they play a lot of rerun stuff. They always have. I mean, you, you so possible you could have seen it. You know. So there's tons of '80s movies that I love. That's awesome, man. I missed some of those films. I guess I'm a little more old school than that. I've seen every one of like the uh, the Corey Haim and Corey Feldman movies. Oh, sure. Um, uh, well, Lost that, Boys. I can thank my sister for that. Yeah, that was the best one. Lost Boys, and then there's also um, Silver Bullet, which I thought was oh, actually yeah. a really good flick too, yeah, with Corey yeah. with Corey Haim and Gary Busey. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I gotta be. Uh, give me 20 seconds. Uh, I'll be right back. 20 seconds.
You're not late, Shelby. You're never late, Shelby. Thank you for coming. It's nice to see you. And nice to hear from you, I should say. Yeah, like the uh, past, uh, well, I guess two months back, probably, realistically speaking, uh, we sh Mike started working on all these these heads, you know, with the intention of bringing them together in a collage, so. Yeah, we're putting them together in a collage now. It's, it's the culmination of weeks of labor. Yeah, it's a lot of work, a lot of work put into this, but, and what you're going to see today is, is really kind of not what it's actually going to be when it's done because uh, I'm going to have to go over it and clean it up and ink it and give it some uh, some wash so that it has some grays in it. And uh, It'll look a lot better when it's when it's completed. Um, it's right now. It, it kind of in a the, rough, um, rough state. Yeah, it's in a rough state because I'm, I'm not getting the uh, the uh, the way I laid them out. They're going to be just a little off, so I'm just kind of a, a, allowing for that and just going with that. For each head, not that far out of sync, but uh, I lost. I kind of lost the uh, <laughs> actual. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not sure. The synchronization. Like Shelby understands, though. She says trusting the process is hard on your heart. <laughs> <laughs> the process always seems to morph a little bit. You know, you like to do the horror thing too. This is really not horror to me. This is like classic fantasy. The old monster movies have atmosphere, and they're like they're like they're like terrible fables, to, but they don't really scare you anymore. I mean, you know, they have they they have they have a mood they they generate that's really atmospheric and gothic. And I think that's one of the reasons that the Universal Horror Films survived. They were they were filmed with a sense of German expressionism that uh, because most of the camera operators were from Germany and had left and fled Germany because of uh, World War One and came to the United States and brought their, their sensibility, their camera sensibility to the United States and influenced cinema greatly, particularly in the, in the horror films. Wow, wow. German Expressionism is what it's called. And it's just a way of filming, it's almost like the same thing as the, thing of, the idea of filming a, a film noir. It's just a, a way of using light and shadows and set design and to create a certain atmosphere and ambiance that you don't see in other films. And that's one of the reasons why we celebrate the Universal Horror Films, I think. You just melted my brain a little bit, Mike. Mm, I, I, I'm passionate about these films. I've watched them since I was a kid and and they they never ceased to entertain me and i never quite understood the, the formula for what made them so cool to me 
quite a few reasons, I guess. Fantasy element, the fact that uh, many of them are strangely romantic uh, and sad. They're like um, like fables. Which is still broken. Oh man, how'd that happen? I don't know. It, it was working. been live for 35 minutes, it's that were connected. But it's lying to you. It's lying. Twitch even said... Why doesn't Twitch want us to be on the air? Like, I, I don't know. It's just some sort of a glitch with Restream. I don't know.
guys on Twitch. I don't know what's going on. Are you working on Twitch now? Yeah, it's on.
Just a minute. Time for a new player. Nobody's talking anymore. I guess I should have I should have stopped talking too, didn't I? Uh you okay, Mike. Trying to get this drawing together. What's that? Now, now it's like Twitch is not working. Oh, uh, bummer. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, man. Be back in 30 seconds. How did this beautiful face happen? It happened very naturally. And naturally, she intends to keep it. Are we it that watching a commercial now? Pure magic. Are we taking a break? Lack factors. He said three minutes. Okay. Right, so it's, it's so no. easy to apply. Gives you a Mike's flawless, off. natural finish. Uh, the perfect it's coverage right that lasts now. all day. Won't clog pores. And it's gently medicated to give your skin the protection that keeps it glowing. Like this, and this, and this. Eight radiant shades in compact, cake, or tube. Pure magic makeup by Max Factor. And here's more magic from Max Factor. New Lashful Textured Mascara Wand. With special lash builders that can add to lashes as no ordinary mascara can. One application fringes, darkens lashes, makes them appear thicker, longer. Lashful Textured Mascara Wand by Max Factor. These cameras are filming an unrehearsed two-hour panel discussion on dental health. Among other things, these mothers talked about toothbrushing and toothpaste. Let's listen to some excerpts about Crest and the importance of dental health. And the one who is eight, no sooner did she get a tooth in than it's got a hole in it. Do you think toothpaste can help? I feel very frankly that uh, Crest has helped my children because in the first time we took him, we had three cavities. And when we started using Crest, he has had one cavity in the last year and a half, and Christy has had none. How did you start using Crest? Did you see it advertised? Because, of, <laughs> because of the advertising. The they tool. usually have so much percentage fewer cavities, and they usually had two test groups, one mm -hmm. who brushed with Crest mm -hmm. but without the Floristan and brushed in exactly the same way, and then the other one who used the Crest formula. Well, something that I have always wondered about that uh, advertisement was how did they know they didn't have those children locked up in a room where they was watching them every time they brushed their teeth. How did they know that those kids all done it just like they're supposed to? Well, don't, don't you imagine in these two test groups they got an equal number of those who probably didn't stick to it as well as they should, and one would balance out the other. So that This lady is correct, and because of such tests, Crest is the only toothpaste recognized effective against cavities by the American Dental Association. Their Council on Dental Therapeutics says, 
Crest has been shown to be an effective decay preventive dentifrice that can be of significant value when used in a conscientiously applied program of oral hygiene and regular professional care. I think you've got to give them a good diet. What else is important for good dental health? Learn uh, the proper way of brushing and the regular checkups and then use the best dentifrice that uh, is available that will cut down the cavities, which personally I feel is Crest. Shouldn't your family be using Crest? The toothpaste for families who want fewer cavities. Alaska Highway, battleground for a war on winter. Snowdozers crunch through bone-cracking cold to keep America's lifeline open to the north. Here on the world's most rugged testing ground for men and machines, they rely on Crestone antifreeze for total protection. Protection against freeze-up, protection against rust. Crestone antifreeze, with its exclusive magnetic film, resurfaces the entire cooling system with a micro-thin inner shield that gives the world's most tested, most trusted protection against rust and corrosion. To have your antifreeze expertly installed, stop at the service dealer who displays this sign. He'll do the job at a fair price, and he's a pro at checking the cooling system, hose connections, and thermostat. Don't settle for anything less than the best. Insist on Prestone antifreeze for total protection, protection against freeze-up, protection against rust with Prestone antifreeze, a product of Union Carbide. Flavor, rich, rewarding flavor made a lark smoker out of this man. But it was the back of the pack that got him to try lark in the first place. Lark is unique in cigarette filtration. Only in the Keith filter do you find two modern outer filters plus an inner filter of charcoal granules. Science uses charcoal granules to purify water you drink and to purify air you breathe. Lark's granules are not only activated, but fortified a special way. This selective filtration smooths the taste, but doesn't thin out the rich tobacco flavor. On the back of new Lark's pack, this man found good reason to try Lark, but it took rich, rewarding flavor to make a Lark smoker out of him. You too will find Lark richly rewarding, yet uncommonly smooth. Okay. All right, we're back. And we're working on a monster piece here. And we got that nice soothing music behind us. That's the so grab some coffee, guys, because it, it's going to be a while to get this thing repenciled.
fun to do man you know it's, it's a little time consuming and a little bit uh, tedious sometimes but the final outcome is worth looking at I guess Twitch figured out. It's fixed. Alright, what was the problem? Our bit rate was too high. Bit rate? Okay. Um, Shelby says, I have a Crayola light board. I'd kill for your table. My table, why would you kill for it? It's not that expensive of a table. Because she's using a Crayola light board. Oh, well. You need a bigger table, I guess. You know, they're not that hard to come by. A couple hundred bucks and you get a nice one. Glass. And then you can actually... I need to have a light table inserted into it. Uh, one of those kind of you get set right on there and it becomes a light table all the way around the perimeter of it. You right need a, a desk lamp underneath of it. I use a desk lamp. Common every everyday ordinary desk lamp and light it light it through the through the glass, and it, it suffices. But it's by no means you know what it could be. I really wanted to go all out and make it uh, make it special. black and white piece or are you adding color? Are you doing this as a commission or your own business? I'm um, doing this one, um, this one really for myself. I built, you know, people can buy it if they want to. I'm going to put it on my store. Uh, it'll be available if somebody wants to buy it uh, as a print or an original. Um, it's not a commission, no. Uh, I, uh, I haven't done a commission in, in a while. Uh, I'm waiting for someone to come along, actually, but uh, I'm sure one will. But yeah, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, and I'm doing this. I, I do whatever I draw. Yeah, it's black and white. I think it's going to be black and white when it's done. Uh, uh, with gray, I'm going to use some grays, uh, a little bit of an ink wash on it. I haven't done an ink wash in quite a while. I'm adding some gray to the background to make it more dark and black and maybe put a moon up here. 
and I'm thinking about throwing in some small letters saying, you know, say classic monsters or something. I, I like commercial art. I, I, I would have been, I would have loved being a poster artist, designing posters for movies and stuff. That, you know, but that requires a little bit more knowledge about painting than I have. I, I, I'm really, I, I need to work on my paintings. Oh, I dig it. Okay, well. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I just try to figure out different stuff to draw every week, and sometimes I draw things I've been dying to draw. Like, this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time never got it out of my system so now I'll be able to say I got this monsters out of my system and then I can uh, start working on a couple other ones that I have always wanted to finish but never did. Mike, she says your pencil pieces are my favorite. Oh, you, thank you. Thank mm. you. Uh, mm. I, I, that's interesting for you to say that. I don't know. And, uh, you know, we love being live. This is something we've always wanted to do, uh, just to get 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 it out there. You know, get you know. It, I, I never claim to be the greatest artist in the world, uh, but I do like to draw and I do like to create pieces, and and I think that's really what it's all about. Just nobody putting, putting your own uh, personal your personal feelings into your work and, and 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 showcasing it for the world to see. That's what art is. Nobody is the greatest artist in the no, world. No, nobody's the greatest. But there are a lot of great ones. Art is subject to interpretation. That's for sure. That is for sure. One man's art is another man's junk. Yep, that's for sure. This is something I always wanted to do because I always loved these characters. These movies were, I look forward to seeing these movies uh, back in the day. When you couldn't just see them anytime you wanted to, you had to wait till they showed them. And I'd always peruse the TV guide. Anybody know what a TV guide is? I remember the TV uh, guide. Uh, it was I always, called Channels Magazine. I would always peruse a TV guy. We only had four channels when I was growing up, so it was pretty easy to figure out what they were playing. And I would circle movies that I thought that would interest me, like these kinds of movies, Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman. If they were ever showing them, I'd be sure to watch them. And uh, provided my mother would let me stay up late to watch them. If I didn't behave, I couldn't stay up and watch monster movies. So I had to be a good boy. But I've always enjoyed these films and, and these characters. Not to say I don't like modern monsters, I do too. I like uh, I like the more modern monsters. There's been quite a few come down the pipe, but these guys here are, are the originals. They were the first, and they struck a chord. Obviously, uh, we wouldn't be talking about them today if they didn't. Uh, uh, I, I think that there's a great following for this kind of thing. Um, some reason.
Yes, sir. Shelby wants to see your, your pencil work so far. She, she All right. Turn off the black light. Hang on, hang on, I'll fix it. Hang on. <laughs> it's in slow mo. It's a lot more to do. This is really not. They're not looking as good as they did on the other pictures yet, and they will when I go back and refine them after I get them basically on here. Once I get them all on here, then I can start going back and cleaning them up and adding to them and giving them some softness and some darkness and, and stuff like that. I just wanted to have a sort of a template to work from. You can see it's kind of it's kind of basic at the moment. Now, when you look at the the, the, at the original pieces that I did, okay? Here, look at those. That's what I'm hoping it's going to look like when it's finished. Much more like that with all the characters that I did. Yeah, I should probably just cut the characters out really nicely and paste them up and, make, and just use those <laughs> and be done with it. There you go, you know, because these came out pretty good. But you can see they're still not finished either. They're, 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 just, they're just basically sketches. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And then we go back to this. We're going to be putting them all together. And I'm working on Mr. Hyde right now, and then uh, Frankenstein, and the Phantom, and King Kong. Thank you, Shelby. I appreciate you. We're going to turn the light back on and go back to work now. Right there is a face only a mother could love, Mike. Who's that, Mr. Hyde? Yeah. Oh yeah. This is um, him at his worst. Yeah, he, uh, he fell off the ugly tree, hit every branch on the way down, Mike. He sure did. <laughs> he sure did. He's so ugly. When he was born, the, the doctor slapped his mother, Mike. That's right. Well, Mr. Hyde, though, he was born out of a test tube. actually look better than the ones I'm doing now but I'm gonna to try to make the other ones look as close as I can to that the the originals that he sketched most of them they're, they're all in different colors yes I mean, they they can be published in, individually I think yeah just by themselves we'll see did she not see those would you like to see those I took those over, I made nine or ten original drawings of these monster characters in the night. I did them in color, some of them, and uh, then I went and made copies of them and shrunk them down in black and white for this piece, for this collage.
just as a uh, side note, he did recap all those at the beginning of the video. Yeah, I did. Uh, we could show them again. There's a rewind. There's a rewind button. You can uh, watch the video from its uh, the beginning uh, after it, after it's been recorded. Do it. Do it. Please do, please do. She says she wants to go live. Well, why not? Anybody, anybody can do it. This is maybe tomorrow. Go live and paint one of your paintings live, then you have footage of it being created. And you'll save that for all time. I got footage of a lot of, of me drawing a lot of my stuff. And it's nice, you know, you can look back on it years later and say, wow, I did that. Amazing, huh? I can't believe I did that. Don't think we're going to be able to ink this today. I do think I'll be able to get it penciled in, at least basically, and then go back over it once I take it out from take the uh, the pattern out from under it, and just go back over it my on my own and clean it up and add the uh, the inks and the grays to it. So that it will look more like a final piece and hopefully a little more gothic as far as cinema cinematically. Yeah, Mr. Hyde boy. He was a gruesome person. He got his uh
price card stuff, man, I didn't show it up today. Well, I just got Twitch face. Okay, I think I can leave this as it is and move back to that one and see what we can do with that. Bracket style. Here he is, the man of the hour. What's up, Sap Cards, the man? You're making a lot of nice paintings lately, I see. Quite a few posts. Twitch working, it wasn't working last week. So now uh, I knew that uh, you'd finally be able to find us. Hope everything's going well. Happy New Year to you. Happy Christmas. I'm sorry I didn't get with you on, on those days. I know you got that big show coming up. I saw. I'm real happy about that, man. I can't wait to help. It turns out really well for you. Holy crap. He's going to be selling uh, about 60 paintings. Wow, you got that many done? Unbelievable, Scotty. 60 paintings? Yeah. Oh, and my God. Well, I, look, we, we, I guess you're going to do pretty well, man. I can only imagine you're going to do really well. Proud of you, brother. Yeah, that's huge. You're man. a talent. You're a huge talent. Huge. That is huge. 60 paintings? That's huge. And they've been wondering. He said he was going to uh, offer us, you know, maybe do, do a gallery showing, you know, he wanted that. Yeah. You know, and I, I think that's what it needs to do, really. I told him I, I advised him to do it, man. Yeah, that's, that's legit. And he's going to Houston, I believe. Yeah, Houston. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be awesome, man. I can't wait to see pictures of that. Be sure and keep us informed over here at Mike Jones Draws of what you're doing, Mr. Scar Cardstone Man. And some more oil paintings, some acrylics, uh, a little bit of all of that, or what? Sixty of them. I imagine it's a little bit of everything. That's a lot. That's a lot. But I mean, I, I mean, imagine he's doing some watercolors too. Yeah. I know he's been doing a lot of that. And uh, I, I can't wait to see some of that. I don't know if I've even seen any of those. I saw, he might have showed me a couple of them. He showed me some paintings the last time I was here, but he posted them all. Yeah, it's a mix. Okay. Okay. Cool. 
Mix it up, man. Give him some variety. About 10 oils. That's the way to do it, my friend. We got us uh, some monsters going on here. We're trying to get this out of the way so that I can put it behind me and move on to something else. But since I already put so much work into it and we missed those three weeks, I'm still doing it. But it's all right. It's still fun. Something he's been wanting to do his whole life. Thank you, know? you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. It's, I'm probably going to do it again in a different way once I get this one done because I just love drawing these characters. They're just wonderful characters to do. You know? But thank you so much. Your approval means a lot to me. Scotty, I just figured I played with it earlier and I noticed the stream would start, but then it would stop right away. Uh, and I thought I had it going earlier, so I'm like, oh, good, it's fixed. But then I checked back, and I'm like, no, nah, still broken. So, because of the new, the new install, uh, you know, there's some settings that were still at, not set right, and my bit rate was one of them. So my bit rate was too high, so Twitch would uh, cut the stream off. Yep. Problem solved though, 100%. <laughs> Man. Yep. Good thing uh, you can you can change the bit rate midstream. So I just went in like three clicks problem solved Shelby's gonna be sad. The bucks just lost. They're out of it now. Sorry about that. Rip. That's a drag. No, no Tampa Bay riots this year.
over here. Well, I'm really glad to hear you got that show going, man. The party's over? What's the party's over? What's that? The box. Oh, for the box, hell yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> I love the home team, but you know, hey. That sucks. send pictures man make sure you take some photographs of all this stuff I'd like to see how that goes man I really would it should be exciting for you you know you better meet, meet some, yeah. some some cool people and sell some of your art man and loop it yeah <coughs> you're gonna feel like you're gonna feel like VIP in that hotel room oh uh, they'll probably treat him very well I'm sure he's a visiting guest artist or, 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 I don't know how many people, uh, uh, how many other artists are they going to have there? Uh, is this uh, a show for a lot of different artists? Okay. Jacket, huh? Oh, interesting. Very urban. So there's only like, you know, three or four other guys that are going to be there, right? It's a little bit of a, a little bit of everything, a little bit of different. The guy paints jackets and one guy does a photography. And you uh, you have your your beautiful uh, hopefully you bring it's your western paintings you're bringing your horses and things of that nature, right? Some of your cowboy stuff, uh, watercolors. Anything Western would probably sell in Houston. Sell some work. It's probably the first time you've been out of town in a while, ain't it? Since COVID.
So half just random stuff, half rock and roll. It's just, yeah, it's been a while. I know, because that must be kind of exciting in itself, just being able to get out of town and go hang out somewhere else for a little while. Get a nice sweet. Maybe you get out, meet some birds of the night, possibly, or just have a good time hanging out in the town. I hope it's a good time for you. I'm looking forward to hearing all about it when you get back. Superman mark, my signature, you know, my MSP, it has proven to be a ball buster. Why is that? 
Why signature? Why signature has? Why is your signature a ball buster? His masterpiece. Masterpiece. Oh well, well that's always interesting. Can't wait to see that. What is it? A uh, it's a self portrait. All right, I'm gonna take this out right now. And uh, let's turn it back on for a minute. What are we doing? Let's turn it back on for a minute. Let's turn what on? Okay. I'd like to see it, man. I'm not sure exactly what you mean. His uh, his signature done. He's gonna piece. draw paint a painting of his signature. Right. Okay. Like I did with mine. Like sort of like I did with my my, my logo kind of. Well, sort of. But like if you painted your signature. But he's gonna accent it with a very specific little wispy brush strokey thing. I want to see that. <laughs> the Nike swoosh of signatures. Okay, I get you. Looking forward to seeing how that turns out. That's a good idea. I mean, that's what I did with my business card. I put my signature, my, my, my signature on it, kind of. You know, Mike Jones draws. That's what I put on it. Okay. They ask you what it is. MSP. Well, Milton Scott and Phillips. They don't know. Nobody knows your first name. Uh... Mr. Milton. Uh, Milton the Monster. Uh, Milton Scott Phillips. I've seen you sign an SP as well. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, deciding on a signature can be a pain. You know, you need some kind of mark that says that it's you and nobody else, I guess. I like mine. I like mine. It's fun. It, it's just the way it came out. Okay, cool. Cool. Awesome. I think we're ready for some light now. Oh yeah? Yeah, I put some light on, take this off, and uh, I can start working on fixing this thing. It's gonna require some fixing for sure. Whoa. Well, we're in the dark, whoa. Whoa. In the dark, hold on just a second. Let me get some light going here. All right, light it up, light up, light it up. Okay. 
I like it, man. I like it. I can't wait to see it. Squad G3. There he is. The man. The mystery. The menace. What's up there, Squad G13? We were hoping to hear from you today. We've been talking with Scotty Phillips uh, and working on this little, trying to put together this monster piece a little bit, trying to get it started. Uh, and they're going to clean it up and hopefully make it look better. Right now it looks kind of crappy. But um, in fact, I think I'm going to stop working on it tonight and uh, probably call this broadcast an early an early uh, end to the broadcast because I'm not going to be able to get uh, too much done on it tonight to where it's to where it's like in a sense of completion now each head requires going to require a little bit of work to get it looking decent and some background color some black and some wash is going to be required on this so uh, it's going to look nice when I'm done with it but right now it looks like crap. <laughs> so, but we got it to the point now where I can, I can start working on it without any other reference. Mandy's here too. Mandy! It's old home week. Everybody's showing up now, finally. It's so nice of you all to come by, really, to watch me do this crap. Um, <laughs> uh, I love you too, honey. I love you dearly. I love all my friends. And followers, but you, my dear, you're my sister, I love you. Yeah, I've just uh, finished uh, redrawing this piece here. This is what it's really going to kind of look like when it's done. Party's over, Mandy. Party's over. Yeah, the, the bug's box. just lost. No riot. I know, I know. And, and as a... As a as a punishment, now you're forced to watch Mike Jones draws. It's a poor replacement for a winning game. Sorry your team lost. So we're just doing working on this thing. And, uh... What's he say? Uh, that's... That's, uh, YouTube. The bots are strong on YouTube, but that's okay. Oh, okay. And it still counts as a view. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess. I guess. Um, anyway, we, do it. we redrew these characters again a little bit onto another paper. Uh, and I'm going to clean them up and make them look more like these. And get some blacks in there and some grays. And I think it's going to be an outstanding little, little horror tribute when I'm done with it, and then we can move on to my next tribute, which is for this man, Lon Chaney Sr., who did these two roles here. Probably his two most famous roles. And then do a few more heads of him and do like a picture of him with it and call it, you know, uh, master, of a thousand, master of makeup, thousand, man of a thousand faces, whatever you want to call it. My tribute to Lon Chaney Sr. All right, we're gonna put this away now, and say good night after we show you these pictures one more time. Also, uh, got some pictures I want to do. A picture I did a long time ago that I want to do again onto a master drawing. I want to make a Space Ghost, a Space Ghost port, uh, poster. And I did these drawings a while back and I'm going to, I'd like to do them with a nice space background with his, uh, his people, Jan and Jace here. Show them all flying with the uh, Space Ghost logo in the background. And, you know, Oh hell yeah, that yes. one looks. Cars though, man, likes it. I I know, and I take the I take probably have the spaceship going the other way. I don't know, but uh, something like that. The tribute to Alex Toe, uh, and just a fun piece I'm gonna hang on my wall. I think uh, Space Ghost was always one of my favorites when I was growing up. 
And I think I captured the poses pretty well that Alex did for them. Uh, so that was something I plan on working on when I did, if I didn't have anything else to work on. The backlog. There's so many different things that could be done. The backlog. But uh, my uh, my monster heads all turned out pretty good. And I'm trying to put the same type of quality into that, that other piece with them, only it's a little bit smaller. Um, but this one, I, I framed this. I framed that. That's that's definitely a Lon Chaney there, boy. You know, so. And the King Kong. When I did these, I kind of played with the color a little bit. Instead of just drawing them with graphite. And I uh, got a little more to the Basil Gogos idea of all these different colors and, uh, you know, stuff, even though I'm not doing that with oil. It actually kind of started when I, when I did this one. I did it all in green. And I thought, okay, well, you know, why don't I just do them all different colors, you know? And then eventually it got to the point where I was putting and more, color, all. more colors into each one. Until I get to the point where I'm doing this kind of stuff here. Even though all of them had their own little theme. Pride had a blue, mummy had browns, purple on or blue on the that one was actually the least the least well done of all of them. Right, that one they needs needed to be fixed. And then this one. Which I'm very happy with, but I think this is the one I like the best, actually. Anyway, we're gonna say good night. We're gonna cut the process short. Uh, the Jake Caboon and I have had a really long, tough week this week, and we need to refresh our energies for tomorrow to start all over again. We'll be back again next week. To work on this some more and perhaps start a different drawing altogether. And we hope you'll join us. We appreciate all your support and everybody who came by to say hello. I love all of you. Of course, I didn't mention you all, but you know who you are and you know that I love you. Adios, my friend. Thank you for coming. As always, I appreciate your support, man. And good luck with your show. Yeah, good luck in here. Good luck with your show, Scotty. Um, Shelby, good luck with what you're up to, too. And I know you, you, you're you a good artist. You can keep up the good work. And go live tomorrow. And go live. What do you got to lose? I mean, really, it's it's not that difficult. If you got the right equipment, you can do it. I mean, that's the beauty of living in this day and age. You can stream. Everybody can be a star. So, uh, you know, keep it up. And uh, let's uh, see what you're, what you're working on. And Squad G13, he's doing the same thing. He's out there. He did a really nice piece last week, which I wanted to show on the show. Maybe yeah, he'll bring painting. it over. When, huh? The painting, yeah. Yeah, the painting of the, uh, the character that he did. I really like that. It's a good, good picture. Uh, Paul Maitland, you're the greatest. I love your work. Uh, I still would love to see you do a, a Batman and Robin Adam West Burt Ward for me. That'd be really cool. In return, I'll do anything you want as far as an art piece. Let me know what you'd like to draw, what you think I might, you might like. You want my creature? I got the creature hanging over here on the wall that I did uh, that you said would you liked. I'll send that to you for nothing, man. Well, we're going to be doing more, more characters and we're going to be getting back to my comic book. Uh, there's a lot of projects we're planning to finish here in 2022. The backlog. Oh. The backlog is tremendous, and and we have been remiss. So you can expect to see a, quite a few different uh, different things. The uh, the drawing we did last week, the Winnie the Pooh drawing, which I guess I could show you again. It still requires a. About another hour of touch-up, a little strengthening of the colors, a little bit, of, a little bit of work on it, not too much, but it's going to go into um, 
into uh, my friend's and his wife's nursery for the new baby, Marina. And we're happy about that. Um, and, you know, we just try to stay busy with different, different projects, different drawings. Uh, I'm actually working on a new uh, pot, uh, a planter pot that I'm going to be painting uh, with, um, it's going to be a sort of a ode to Batman, the TV series, the old TV series, and it's going to uh, be a bunch of uh, onomatopoeias like pow, splat, bam, zock, yeah. zowie, all that yeah. stuff all over this pot, you know, and then when I put a cool plant in it, it's going to go a mile and a It's just a personal project for me. It'll be real bright, very bright colors. It's going to look nice. What? Are you going to say, Jake? Uh, Biff, Zap, Zowie, Sure, Splat, and there's my old Space Ghost I did, he just, just showed up on the uh, slideshow there. Has an old t-shirt I made years ago. I'd love to do more Space Ghost and the Hanna-Barbera stuff because I, I really enjoy their, their designs. Alright, well, I want to thank you all again for coming. I hope I'll see you next week. Keep your pencils sharp. Keep drawing. This is Mike Jones and Jacob Bone signing off for another Sunday. We'll see you next week. So long. Stay safe. Internet. Stay safe, Internet. <laughs>